What's going on you guys my name is dust and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the crux now this is a duo trio quad and up bass it's something you can really slap down pretty easily it comes with a great starter and has a super secluded compound where you can put down a bunch of deployables and have it completely sectioned off in case somebody gets in coming through this double door we can see our sectioned off furnaces and additional farm space. The back of the base looks just the same and also has the same great defenses. The space has two external TCs that can't be soft sided and also protect from about seven rockets. They can be quick disconnected by putting a twig roof here. Simply shoot out the roof and replace the floor frame to connect the TC back to the base. The reason you'll want disconnectable TCs is if you get your main base raided, you have a quick way to disconnect the TCs to replace your own. Again, coming into the courtyard, we can see that there are auto turrets all around. They provide 360 degree coverage and there basically aren't any angles that it's good to raid from or try to grub from. Also, because of the design with the shooting floors coming out from the base as well as the stone foundations for the planter boxes, there's basically no area for grubs to build into because even with only two externals, you can see our build privilege extends so far out that it's basically useless. As soon as you build high enough to even see inside the compound, the turrets can see you first, making this incredibly difficult to grub. The whole name of the game with the Crux is having a private, secluded, and super defendable base for small groups. The Crux is super livable, has a ton of space, and is also relatively strong for the price. The cheapest raid path I've found is about 51 rockets and that's taking both externals and using a hammer on all of the windows. You can see on the shooting floor we have double ramps everywhere and all of these doors can actually be closed up to give you complete privacy. You can put down a bunch of deployables up here as well like mixing tables, workbenches, research tables and anything else you might need. If we come into the middle of the shooting floor, we can see two full-sized loot rooms, two bedrooms, a couple drop boxes, and a locker. If we come up onto the roof, we'll see a heli hangar that you can fit up to about four helicopters into, which is awesome. We also have two vending machines on here for drone-only shops. There's a ton of space up on the roof to land, so even your noob friends can come visit. And we can fit four windmills up on top of this base, which is great because it'll power everything that you could possibly need. Coming back down, we can see a couple vending machines here just used as additional storage. Since these walls are sheet metal anyways, 
they're the same price as destroying a vending machine, so I went ahead and put those in there. We also have room up here for some lockers, large batteries, two full loot rooms, and some other deployables. Meanwhile, an auto turret guards the entire corridor. Coming down the chute, which also contains a triangle bunker, we can see our core loot rooms. As we take the windows off, we can see that we have four loot rooms, as well as a TC room and a furnace room. The furnace room is actually kind of interesting because the drop boxes give you additional storage and you can actually distribute your loot a little bit better. So if somebody glows through the walls, they won't be able to get to everything right away. Then, like I mentioned before, this base has a triangle bunker and I'm sealing that up now. Keep in mind this won't do much from a wall raid perspective because they'll be able to splash it from the outside, however from a door raid it will definitely add cost and make raiders rethink their entry point. The starter unit for the crux is super affordable sitting right at about what a 2x2 costs to build with no honeycomb. We can come in our front airlock and we'll see our TC and furnace on the left and then more furnaces on the right. We can fit all four sleeping bags here with room for plenty of extras. Right here I'm showing a tier 2 workbench with a barbecue, a couple small boxes, and two full loot rooms. first start off by building a 3x1 and putting these triangles as you see. Next I'll put on window frames here and just put some strength in glass. If you don't have that yet you can put window bars in here as well and this will be our airlock. Wall in the rest of the 2x1 and put a roof on it. When you attach the tiles, make sure you're not attaching them to the outer walls or they'll be susceptible to splash damage from the outside. Here we can go ahead and put our TC. And across from that, we can make a room for our furnaces. Now in the back, we can create two loot rooms using standard half height walls. Feel free to put whatever variation of loot room you want in here. I'm just doing four large boxes, uh, but this is also a perfect place for repair benches or other items. Now at this point, if you'd like, you can seal off the loot rooms with window frames just like we did with the TC and the furnace. Now we're putting a tier 1 and tier 2 workbench on the back wall as well as a barbecue and the couple of boxes. I'm putting four bags down here and you can also fit a campfire in the middle of them if you don't have a barbecue yet. And there we go, that's our starter. To start expanding, we will upgrade our foundations, make sure the TC room is armored and the rest of them can be sheet metal. Then we'll place triangles here to create another loot room and it's easiest just to place the boxes now so you don't have to worry about trying to do it through the window. Draw a half height wall here and add a second floor. I'm just going to use a ladder to jump up here and place the other boxes. Then go ahead and wall it in. We'll do the same on the other side.
Coming up to the top, we can throw a ceiling on it. You can do this directly in high qual, or you can do it in sheet metal if that's all you have for now. I'm going to upgrade the ceiling to the final grade, which is all HQM. Again, if you don't have it right now, it's totally fine. Just use sheet metal. Now I'm putting a triangle on the front where the entrance is, and that will be our chute eventually. And then we'll put squares in these locations. After putting the squares down, we can fill in all of the gaps with triangles. On the front and the back of the base, we will make a hexagon out of these triangles like you see here. The side opposite of the chute will be our front entrance, so we can go ahead and place some wall frames here to hold some shop fronts and a double door. If you don't have armored right now, that's no problem. Just put a sheet metal door here. Then we will wall in the entire perimeter. I'm just again using sheet metal as the final grade. The nice part about building the base this way is it'll let us build out the entire inside without being bothered. Notice on the top here I'm putting a double door frame as well because this will be how we get to the shooting floor. While in this front section, and place a half height floor here. Put ceilings on this area and then finish walling in the jump up area. This is going to be our temporary roof exit, but it will also be the entrance into our shooting floor. Then we'll go ahead and throw a ceiling on the entire base. Now that we're completely sealed in, we can go ahead and upgrade the core of the base to armored. This is going to be the best time to do it unless you want to spend a lot of time moving boxes and just generally not having fun. After we've done that, we can ladder out of here and start building up all of the honeycomb. The back will be slightly different, and we'll get to that in a second. Honeycomb the back portion just like normal, adding these dividers in so they can't splash both floors at once. And then here we'll put a half height triangle just sitting there, and this is what our triangle bunker will actually attach to. I'll also HQM the entire chute, as well as the ceiling above it. Once you're at this point, go ahead and throw a ladder on. Upgrade the fronts of all of these windows to sheet metal and then make sure to rotate these ones out.
place garage doors in both of these slots as well. We can get rid of the reinforced glass windows and replace them with HQM ones. Also make sure to remember to upgrade the wall behind this workbench and place down a tier 3 when you get one. We can do the same for the furnace room and the TC room here. By picking up this furnace, it gives us easy access to upgrade the rest of this room to HQM. I'll put a half height floor here so then we can throw an auto turret up here to protect the main corridor. And then we can throw a garage door on it after we're done. A double armored door also works really well here, so it's up to you. Then we'll finish honeycombing off the top portion. Just keep in mind the one side that has vending machines will be slightly different. So when we get right here, we'll use doorways instead of walls. These just give you additional storage and we can make sure to rotate this wall so it's facing outwards. I'm building out these center rooms as locker rooms, but you can feel free to do whatever you want with all of these triangles. There's a number of different configurations you can do, but I'm choosing to do two loot rooms, two locker rooms, and two utility rooms. Also, this is an amazing spot for a shotgun trap. All of your loot rooms can benefit from this. If you pick up the bottom boxes, you can slap one of those down right above them and just replace the boxes. Even when the window is on and it's open, if somebody walks past, they'll instantly die. In this room you could add another locker, another battery, or whatever you like. I'm adding a few more furnaces just because they fit nicely here. And on this side I'm throwing a large battery. Then I'm putting double door frames in all of these slots and throwing garage doors in them with the exception of the one right on the front. Uh, I found that a double armored door works really well here because you can toggle the hatch in case somebody gets into your airlock. Since we picked up our tier 2 from the basement, we can go ahead and place that up here now. This is super handy for crafting meds and ammo right as you're about to leave. Here we can seal up the triangle bunker by placing a twig floor frame here as well as a triangle roof. If you're on console, I'm sorry, this probably won't work for you as far as I understand, uh, but the base is still relatively secure without it. Just go ahead and replace that single door with a garage door and you'll be good to go. Now to protect this base from being griefed if it gets raided in this situation, We'll go ahead and put external TCs on by building out 8 squares, placing a triangle at the end, and then removing all 8 of the squares. We can then build back with half moons. Upgrade the last one to metal, and then build 2 squares off of it.
This will be the entrance to our compound, so we can go ahead and build a little gate. Then we can build out another four squares and then put two triangles at the end just like this. Make sure to use half walls on this back part to make it detachable. And then metal these parts because this is where the TC will sit. You can upgrade this one, you don't really have to. You can always just replace it, but I found it's easy just to leave it that way. And then put metal floor frames above it. And you can see this is the quick disconnect mechanism and how it works. All you have to do is place a roof here and it immediately destroys one of the floor frames. Coming over to the other side, we're just going to quickly reproduce exactly what we did on the first side. And there we go. Now we have two external TCs that will protect us from griefers. The shooting floor is one of the things that makes the crux stand out, and to build it is actually really simple. We start off by placing a square with two door frames, then place a floor frame and a floor. In Twig, we'll go ahead and make this little half-height build up here so then we can put the second ramp on it. And after we climb our way up, we can enclose this in windows. And just like this, we can place the first ramp, and coming right here, we can rotate this and place the second. Then you can go ahead and shoot out the twig. You can do this from upstairs as well. And there you go. We'll go ahead and reproduce this three more times on the other corners of the base. Using a little editing magic, you can see we've gone ahead and done it for the other three. Coming out to the sides, we'll do something very similar with a floor and floor frame, then another half height build up. Just do this in twig, and the beauty of this is you can actually reach it from the shooting floor so you don't have to jump down. And close this all, throw a ramp here, and then again, rotate a ramp into position and destroy the build up below it. We'll do that again on the other side here, and the orientation doesn't really matter. Uh, you can pick which way you want the ramp to face. Now before we put in the triangle parts, we'll want to put a roof on all of this, otherwise the triangle uh, roofs will actually block us from placing the roof tiles above it. So first off, we'll start by enclosing this and we can actually make this into a quick little loot room. This is great for drop off chests or, you know, putting your roof camper L9 in. And yes, we all do it. Don't pretend like you don't. give the roof stability, we will build out the inside of the shooting floor quick. These windows are actually optional. You don't have to place them. You can use solid walls instead. Uh, they'll actually make the loot rooms here a little bit stronger, um, but otherwise you can use HQM windows and they'll be about the same. Our bedrooms will go in the middle here. 
and make sure the entire ceiling is made out of sheet metal. This is the triangle that our jump up will go into that'll give us our roof exit. Coming up here we can easily finish the roof. And that's not supposed to be a square. There we go. Then we can go ahead and build this little roof exit. The one on the left should be sheet metal and the one on the right can be stone. The one on the left will be exposed to the outside. Then we can use basic window frames or shop fronts, totally up to you. And these are optional as well. They're drone only shops, so you can go ahead and throw vending machines in here. And if you don't have vending machines quite yet, and you don't have the gears or whatever, you can always just throw single doors in there. Again, on the front, you can use three garage doors, which I prefer, or you can do shop fronts and garage doors. Uh, really any combination that works for you and the resources that you have at the time. Now that we have a ceiling on this, we can go ahead and create the triangle peaks here. I actually got this inspiration from Evil Wars video, and these are super useful, especially when used in conjunction with the roof ramps. You can see that the entire shooting floor becomes a four rocket minimum to get into, which is way better than a lot of them. On these windows, you can use embrasures as well. You don't have to use, uh, you know, glass windows. Glass windows are actually quite a bit weaker than embrasures, so I would use vertical embrasures. Then we can throw triangle roof tiles on the entire thing. And if you're having trouble placing them, it's actually a lot easier to just do it like this. Uh, running around them is easier than flying for some reason. Also, each one of these pieces that extends out is a potential liability because people will door camp on them, they'll sit on them and uh, it's not a good time, ask me how I know. I've played with this base in like four or five real wipes now and it's happened, so. Go ahead and throw some barricades on it. Now back on the shooting floor, we can finish up building out the interior by putting two loot rooms in here, as well as two bedrooms and a quick locker room. Use whatever you've got here. If you don't want to waste garage doors on these particular ones, that's totally fine. Um, otherwise, if you have HQM windows or a solid wall there, go ahead and throw garage doors on. That way it'll be two garage doors plus the vertical embrasures to get into this. So it's actually relatively secure for, you know, high value loot because one of the best methods of keeping your loot in a raid situation is distributing it throughout your base. So then if somebody gets into one area, they don't get all of it. And the final part here is just throwing a little locker here. Always make sure to lock your lockers, your TCs, uh, you know, any deployables like that. Then to finish up the shooting floor, we can throw double doors on all of these empty slots. This again will just ensure that we have privacy when we want it. 
We can throw deployables up here like mixing tables and stuff like that. We don't want people seeing what we're up to. It also gives people less information about your base if they are scouting it out to raid. If they can't see anything inside it, they don't know what materials, they don't know what kind of doors you have and so on. Now to build the compound, we can come right up to this front gate here and line it up straight on and then line up the wall with the middle line on this window. Then coming in here, we'll put a twig foundation and line it up right on this corner. When we place that down, we can still add this window here and upgrade that to stone. And we'll do the same thing all the way around the base on all four corners. And we'll throw extra frames here for stability. Coming out from this triangle, we can throw our large furnaces right when they can place and then throw your wall almost touching it. Just like this, we can get basically perfect fitment every single time, and it's relatively easy to line up and do. Then we can put down our stone foundations if you want a farm out here. Now this is great because this actually contains enough farm space for the same as a 3x3x2, three by three by which is awesome because you won't have any additional upkeep besides a couple stone foundations. Above each of the gate entrances, we can make this little turret pod and make sure to upgrade the bottom part to metal just in case somebody gets in that airlock. They can't just hit it out with a spear by soft siding a stone wall. And there we go, we have our gates completed. I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side just in fast motion. You can see with the placement guide that I gave earlier, the barricades fit right on there super tight and nobody's getting through. The last couple things I'll show are pretty important. They are the electricity system, so the windmills and the turrets that guard the compound. You can see all we need are a single frame going up to hold a windmill, which was actually... I didn't know you could do that. Um, I saw somebody do it on Builder Sanctuary and I thought it was genius because you can basically fit them anywhere and you can put a lot of windmills up on this one small base. The easiest way to build these in a real wipe is just by using ladders uh, or you can just use twig buildups on the side of these frames. Just like that, we have all four of these windmills, which will provide us plenty of power. And then coming down into the compound, we can put turrets on each of these four areas. This will give us full 360 degree coverage with just about every single angle having three to four turrets able to see it. it makes the thing an absolute nightmare to try to grub or raid. Then we can put one in our heli hanger as well. So if we leave the door open, we don't have to worry about somebody. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoy this base just as much as I have recently. It's been an absolute blast to live out of for the last few wipes. And go ahead and stop by my Discord if you have any questions at all. It's always an awesome time getting to meet and talk with every one of you. We'll see you guys in the next one.